What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com back with the next part of our modeling a city inside of SketchUp tutorials. So in today's video, we're gonna take some reference photos that I took in person and use them to model the main building on our site. Um, if you're looking for more great SketchUp tips, make sure you check out my free SketchUp tips guide at TheSketchUpEssentials.com slash tips. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what I've done is I've actually walked around downtown in downtown Castle Rock and I've taken some reference photos of what different things look like down here. And I'm gonna use these to kind of flesh things out. You can see how these are a lot more detailed than like the Google Street View images or something like that. But what I'm gonna do specifically is I'm gonna use these in this video to create kind of the main building in the center of this square that we have here. But you can also use this for your other buildings as well. And so one thing I I want to point out when you're doing this, when you're trying to take reference photos for this kind of thing, what you want to try to do is you want to try to get photos like this one. So this photo in particular, um, th the nice thing about this photo, and I wish I'd taken it maybe a little bit more to the right over here, but it has very defined perspective lines in here, and you can also see the entirety of the building in the photo. And this got a little bit tricky because there were trees in here casting shadows and stuff like this but this does give me a big wide view of this building where everything is in one scene where I can use this and the other thing I did is if you look at some images up here what I tried to do is I tried to get some close-up images of kind of the wings of the building as well as well as images that kind of show the front of the building so if I needed more detail I had that so really the more photos the better when you're doing something like this we're gonna use this along with our imagery from our satellite view in order to model this building and so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and if you remember we we added the buildings for downtown Castle Rock using the extension placemaker well what I want to do is I want to come in here and I want to hide this building right here so I just double clicked inside of this and I right clicked on it and I clicked hide and the reason that we did that is because I want to be able to come in here and actually trace on top of this building to get the actual footprint because if I was to unhide that building you can see how placemaker came in here and it tried to build the building based on the map data it had but it wasn't very realistic like there's no L shape in here or anything like this that I can see from our front view of our building instead this would be just like a straight rectangle going all the way back so we're just gonna model this ourselves using our satellite view and I'm just gonna do this very simply so I'm just gonna do this just by drawing along the axis lines. And this can be a little bit tricky if you modeled this on terrain like I did. I'm kind of regretting doing that, honestly, for such a flat site. So that's something to consider in the future is you may want to consider not doing this on terrain because it kind of messes up your inferencing. It's nothing that we can't handle, but um, you can see how I'm just struggling a little bit to get this to really run along the axes that I want it to run along. And so I'm just gonna rough out this shape and I'm gonna use the inferencing in here in order to do that. So I'm gonna inference this along the green axis and uh, I'll draw a point about where that corner is and then I'll use inferencing again to draw a line that's the same length Length as this right here and so you can see how that gives me a rough shape of my building well now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from the center point of here just to make sure that this uh, that this is actually from the center of this building because the building is symmetrical like that but I'm gonna draw a line along this edge that's about equal to this point and then I'm gonna take that segment and I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode to copy that over. So now what I have here is I have two segments that are the same length. So now I know that this is kind of centered and I'm just gonna draw a line back to here. And then about the width right here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing from this inference point right here. And it's gonna be kind of the same length and then I'm just going to use the move tool in copy mode to copy this over and the reason I'm just copying that is so that I maintain the symmetry of this building and you can see how I'm using a lot of inferencing in order to do this 
but this allows me to kind of rough out the building shape. And I keep deleting this out just because the face that this is drawing in, um, the face that this is drawing in is kind of blocking my view and I don't necessarily want that. So um, you can just delete that out as many times as you want to. All you have to do to put it back is just to draw a line across the edge here. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make a copy of these three lines using the move tool in copy mode. And then I'm just gonna flip this using the scale tool. And I'll just move this back. And then you can erase out this extra right here. And then on the back side, this is fairly well rectangular. This is fairly rectangular, so we're good here. So now we have our building shape kind of roughed out. Well, now all you have to do is just draw a line across this edge to redraw this face in here. And in this case, what I might do is, since this is up above the ground a little bit, what I might do is I might push pull it down just so it kind of runs through the ground here. If you look down below the ground, I'm just push pulling that until it's all the way through here. And then I'm just gonna push pull this up until it gives me kind of the height of what I think this building should be. So in this case, um, the building is, I think a two-story building for the most part. So two-story building, and let's assume maybe a 15 foot floor to floor, so maybe 30 feet high or something like that. And three feet high is not what we want. So I'm gonna push pull this to a height of 30 feet, and then we're gonna call that good. And then the other thing we need to do is this front piece right here actually goes up to the top, or it goes up higher. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna push pull it up just a little bit, maybe another like five feet or something like that. And if you look at this, this comes to a point so we need to model that point in here. And there's a couple different ways to do that. In this case, I'm just gonna take the really simple way and I'm just gonna draw a line across this and then I'm gonna use the move tool and I'm gonna move this directly up. And we'll say that this is going up maybe seven feet or something like that. And so what we've done is we've roughed out the shape of our building. Well, now we wanna bring these images in and place them along this face. And there's some other things that we're gonna to wanna to model out down here in a minute, but let's go ahead and bring our image in on this face. And so in particular, I want to bring this image in and place it along that face. So in order to do that, we're just gonna do a file import and then we're going to find the model or the folder that all our images are in but we're just going to click this drop down and we're just going to go to all supported image types and i can right click and preview those by just doing view large icons and in particular i want to find this image and when we bring this image in what we want to do is we want to use the image as a texture so in order to do that we're just going to click the little button for texture then we'll double click on this image and it's gonna ask us to put this on a face. Well, in this case, I'm gonna put this one on this face right here. And you can see how right now it's not very realistic. What we really want is we want this piece right here to run along this face. And so in order to do that, we're gonna go into our, um, we're gonna right click on our face and we're gonna click the button for texture. We're gonna click the button for position. And so when you bring up your when you bring up your position texture option, it may look like this. You may have the red, green, blue, and yellow um, pins on here. You don't want those. You wanna right click on this and uncheck the button for fixed pins. Because what we want is we want these white pins. And what this allows us to do is this allows us to single click here and then click again. And we can place all of these different pins on our texture image by single clicking and then moving your mouse and clicking again. And so once you do that, once those pins are set, you can click and drag these so that your texture runs along this face. So you can see how I can take this image and I can apply it to this face. So now if I hit the enter key, you can see how this texture is applied to this face right here. And so once we've applied this to this face, what I wanna do is I wanna sample this texture and I wanna apply it over here. So I'm just gonna click on this button for sample paint and we're gonna click on this face and then we're gonna apply this over here. And you can see how what that does over here is that takes the same image and it applies it on this face. But you can see how because of the perspective and everything else, things got a little bit distorted. So what we wanna do is we just wanna come in and we wanna position this texture as well. Whoops. 
And so you can see how all I have to do is the same thing where I just find these corner points. Like this. And I just click and drag them so that this texture is positioned on this face. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the Enter key. So you can see how I have a texture applied to this face as well. And we could come in here and model out the detail on these faces if we wanted to. Like now that I know what this looks like and where these are, I could break this up into different... Um, I could break this up into actual geometry if I wanted to. I'm not going to do that in this video, but you can definitely do that. And so now we want to do the same thing. Sample, texture, then we're just going to right click on this and we're going to position this one too. So you can see how this is fairly simple to do. Um, you do have to be a little bit careful with things like this one with the point because it's not just straight rectangular, but I think it's gonna work out okay. And we're gonna go ahead and hit the Enter key. And one thing you might wanna think about doing is you might wanna think about adjusting this face to match the texture. So you can see how the slope on this wasn't exactly right, but I can come in here and move this edge until it lines up with this face right here. So, and then I could do a little bit of fine adjustment if I wanted to. Like, for example, since I've got some blue shown in here, I could drag this across a little bit. If I wanted to, I actually don't like what that did, so I'm gonna move it back. But you can kind of fine adjust things in here based on that as well. And so, this is why taking good reference photos is important because we need a texture to go on this face right here and you can see how the image I took doesn't show that so but what I did is I took more photos in here and this one actually shows the detail on this wall of what that would look like so I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna import a new image so I'm just gonna do a file import and we'll find that image and we'll just place that on this face and then we're gonna come in here and position that just like we did before. So in this particular situation, I wanna take these pins and place them like this and they don't have to be exactly right right now because we can come in here and adjust them after we get this placed. So you can see how I got this texture image in here right here and it's a little off kilter. So you can kind of fine adjust this by just adjusting your pins. And for this one here, I'm going to cheat a little bit. And I'm going to reuse the image from this side because this image is symmetrical. So, or this building is symmetrical, meaning the windows on the one side are the same as the windows on the other side, or the whole building skin is the same. So, it's okay if I reuse. part of this image that was over here, over here. And that does get a little weird because you get kind of the same shadow in here again, but it's not that big of a deal. And depending on how detailed you want to be with this, it just really probably doesn't matter all that much unless you're trying to get ultra detailed, in which case you'd be coming in here and modeling the geometry itself anyway. So you can see how I'm just making a whole bunch of fine adjustments in here. just like that. And so one thing I want to point out is as of right now, the way that we have this modeled in here, um, I don't have any images of the skin on this side of the building or this side of the building. I guess I have a little bit of one right here. You could either try to take this and apply it to that face, which might get a little weird because you'd probably get some distortion, 
or you could come in here and you could actually model that out using geometry. So I could come in here and draw this. So I could draw my brick band and then I could copy this down and then I could just apply a material in here. So in this case, I could come to the brick cladding and siding and maybe pick something like, um, I don't think there's a new brick material in here, but maybe pick this antique brick material and apply it to the face like this. And you can see how part of the problem with doing that is this brick doesn't actually match the color of this face. And so what we can do is we can come in here to the edit tab and we can actually colorize that to match up with this brick right here. So you can see how that brick is a little bit lighter than this brick. Well, what we can do is what this is doing right now is this is bringing in a texture image and then it's also assigning a color to it based on that image. Well, we can take this and we can actually click on this button for match color on screen. And so I can click on this button right here and that's actually gonna match the color of the pixels that are in here. You need to be a little careful that you pick the material that's actually on this face over here, not something that was in a shadow. And you can kind of adjust that using the color wheel right here. The other thing I would recommend when doing this though, is I would really recommend that you check this box for colorize because that's gonna keep your color from picking up any weird additional colors that are in here from the match color. And maybe I would match this image right here instead. But I would do the same thing probably down here on my bands where I would probably use a material like this cinder block material. You could make it something else as well. Um, but for this, we'll use our cinder block material and I'm just gonna click on the match color on screen again. And I'm gonna match the color of this banding. So the banding is gonna be about this color. So you can see how I can use match color in order to uh, match up with that. And again, make sure you check the box for colorize when you do that. And so we can just take that and we can just apply that to these faces. We'll just sample our materials like this. And then for this right here, probably what I would do is I would double click on these to select them and just use the move tool in copy mode to copy these across. And then I would just right click and I would reverse the faces so that the, right, the correct side of these faces is facing out. And since we modeled this with photo match, you can see how the heights get a little bit weird in here. Um, you either, would adjust your material or your uh, images that are in here, or just come in here and adjust these up and down a little bit. They're going to look a little, they're going to be a little bit off, just because we're using photos in order to do this rather than actual geometry. If I really wanted to be precise with this, probably what I would do is. I would just come in here and model the whole face with geometry. But you can see how I can just kind of come in here and just use the move tool to move these lines up and down. The only thing that gets a little weird about this is if you ever looked at those like straight across, they'd be kind of not on axis. But we'll just select the same color over here or the same material over here and apply it to these faces and you're good to go. So this is how you can come in and you can use reference photos in order to detail out different buildings inside of your models. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. That should give you a pretty good idea of how you can use reference photos in order to start um, detailing out buildings inside your models. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Did you like this video? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.